guys, it's Francesca from Under the Covers. Welcome back to the channel. And today I am doing my March wrap up video. I read 16 books in the month of March. I'm pretty happy with that number because, as we all know, March has been a little bit of a crazy month and I really didn't feel like reading. I couldn't focus on reading for a lot of the time. So I think that I did lose a lot of good reading days where. I probably should have been reading because the time was there, but my mind was just not there. So I'm pretty happy with that 16. We're going to talk today about what I thought about all of those books. So grab some coffee, grab some tea, and let's just get started. The first book that I read was The Serpent Prince by Elizabeth Hoyt. This is book three in the Princess Trilogy by Elizabeth Hoyt. I still have to read one novella, but I am now done with that old series that's been lingering on my TBR. And I was really excited to read this one because I absolutely loved the previous two books that I read in this series. It is historical romance, and this was my least favorite book of that series. I ended up giving it 3.5 stars, kind of a generous 3.5 stars. Maybe it was more like a 3. Now, when it comes to the heroine, she is a very strong female lead, but the hero, I felt, was too consumed with his need for vengeance, where basically the hero is trying to go after the people that killed his brother and he wants to kill them one by one and for the most part he's been succeeding at it until he ends up being attacked, left, beaten and stabbed, almost half to death and that's where the heroine finds him. So that drive of his to seek revenge was all-consuming and it really made me not like his character as much. So I think most of my issues came from the hero. I did like the fact that in this book the hero does wait to have sex with the heroine until they're, they're married, which is not as common. So I kind of like that in that historical romance setting. I thought that it made sense for them as a couple. It made sense for the story. Now I don't want to spoil too much of the book for you guys, so I definitely don't want to go too much into what worked, what didn't work for me. But um, another thing that I will point out that I don't think it was done as well was how the fairy tale is woven into the story. Um, with all the books in this series, there is some sort of a felt fairy tale, which is where the titles of the books come from, and that is woven into the actual plot of the book. And in this one, I don't think it worked as well for me. I was not as invested and I was not as interested in that aspect of the story. So while I still really enjoyed the writing and I think it's still it's a pretty solid read, I finished it in one day, I don't think it was the best in the series. Um, all of these books can be read as standalones, so I highly encourage you to pick up this series. It's a really, really great series, but this for sure was my least favorite. The next book that I read was Kiss of Vengeance by S. Young. This is book two in the True Immortality series. I rated this 3.5 stars. It is paranormal romance. It does involve the Fae. And this is another one that I don't want to get too much into it because it can be a little spoilery. So what happens in this one is kind of tied to some revelations in the first book. So I definitely don't want to get too much into it, but it does have to do with the gate that opens or it's can open between the Fey realm and the human world. Our hero is actually looking to go back to the Fey world so he can get revenge against the Fey queen who had kidnapped him. He used to be mortal and she converted him into a Fey. I'm not quite sure exactly how that works, but obviously she has special powers. And she kept him as a slave for a long time. He lost his family and he was able to escape and now he wants to get back there and get revenge. And a key point for him achieving that is actually the heroine, so he definitely wants to use her in that plot for him to achieve his revenge. I probably like this one just as much as the first one. I was missing the shifter element because shifters are my favorite and probably I don't love to read about the Fae as much when it comes to paranormal romance, but I think the story in this one was really well done. The pace kept up really nice and steady action, so it was really interesting. Both of them are sort of on the run for a long time, so there's a lot of action, there's a lot of chase and danger. 
The chemistry between these two was really great. It's also a little bit of a slow burn. So definitely everything was developed in a way that makes sense for the story. So I really like that about it. I really like the heroine as well because she is just starting to learn about the paranormal world. She had no idea about any of these things. So her reactions to certain things really made sense for somebody that has no clue what's going on, no clue what her own powers are so i really appreciated her as a character and i really liked the two of them together i am definitely really looking forward to reading more from this series and for sure to get back to the shifters the next book that i read was once upon a sunset by tiff marcello i rated this 3.5 stars this is a women's fiction novel and it's about a woman that's filipino american and she was raised by a single mother she was also very close to her grandmother and now that her grandmother's passed away and her mom's moved in with her they discover some letters that, that her grandmother had saved and those letters actually lead them to believe that the grandfather is not dead which is what they always thought was the case they never met him he was never part of any of their lives through that and obviously with the help of the internet they're able to track down the family find out that her grandfather has now passed away very recently and they decide to embark on this journey of going to meet that side of the family that they never knew existed so both of them travel to philippines they get to reconnect with roots of their family and of their culture that they didn't really explore before. Now this is mainly told from our main protagonist's point of view, but you also get to see some of the, from the point of view of her mother, and you do get some small glimpses of the grandmother's story as well. I thought that this was a very interesting story. I really enjoyed it. It was such a breeze and super fast read. It does have a little bit of a romance in it as well. So I would definitely recommend this one for romance readers that want to try and explore the women's fiction genre a little bit more. The next book that I read was Lord of Scoundrels by Loretta Chase. This is book three in the Scoundrel series. It's a historical romance and I actually, well first I gave this five stars. It's actually my favorite book of the month of March and I picked this up because I decided that I needed to read more of like the really classic historical romances that everybody loves. So I asked you guys on Instagram to send me some recommendations and I will be reading those throughout this year. So this was the pick for this month. I have not read Loretta Chase and I have not read obviously the first two books in this series so I read this one as a standalone. I didn't know anything about this series. The hero is perfection. I don't want to say he's a bad guy but he's definitely not nice so it's one of those like jerk heroes in historical romance that's not as common to see. And then we have a really strong female lead in this one as well. I loved everything about this. The writing was perfect, the plot was perfect, the characters, it was just captivating, it was sexy, it was steamy. I love when he speaks in Italian to her. I'm Italian so obviously that really worked for me. I just can't recommend this book enough. It was so good. I definitely thank Lubna for the recommendation because it was so good and I'll definitely be reading more from this author. I know I have a ton to catch up on but I do want to read more from her and especially in this series because obviously if this came out of that series I'm sure there's going to be more amazing books to read. Up next, I read Desperate Measures by Katie Robert. This is book one in the Wicked Villain series. I gave this four stars. It's an erotic romance, which is something that I haven't been reading a ton of lately. But I picked this one up because it was one of my picks for the 12 Reads 12 Friends challenge. Genesis recommended this to me. And it was not meant to be my book for the month of March, but I was in the mood for an erotic romance so I ended up reading this. I did read this also for Romanceopoly and it was for Passion Place Moon Pack which is to read an erotic romance with a menage or a reverse harem which obviously this one had a menage in it. Now this one is kind of hard to classify because I want to say it's a mafia romance but I'm not sure that that's what's going on. I do know that it's kind of like a cartel type of family and the heroine is not sold but her father basically gives her over to some 
bad guy that's supposed to like take her and marry her. Something happens at the very beginning where that's not how the story's gonna go, but it does have that feel of a dark mafia romance without really diving into the world building of what's going on. A lot of the things in this book are, obviously it is more of an erotic romance, so it is set more in like a sex club, a king club. There's definitely a ton, a ton of sex and it is extremely steamy so if you're looking for that i think it is a great book the lack of world building didn't bother me as much i think that the story was developed nicely enough that you are still getting enough of a connection between the characters and you do know a little bit of what's going on in the world to at least keep you interested in the story now the ending was probably not something I'll buy into too much. It was kind of out of character for me to see that at the end, but I definitely really enjoyed the story and I definitely enjoyed the writing style and it was super steamy, so I will know what to pick up the next time I'm in the mood for an erotic romance. And also I forgot to mention that I read Once Upon a Sunset for Lady Lane for the Moon Pack for Romansopoli as well. The next one that I read was All I Ask by Corrine Michaels. This I rated 3.5 stars. It's a contemporary romance. I also read this for Romanceopoly for the library spot, which means it's a free choice. Now this is a single parent, small town romance, kind of a second chance. The main characters used to be friends while they were in high school and through college, so they were best friends and their friendship fell apart and now this is many years later the heroine has been living in their small town she had gotten pregnant very young so her life had to change dramatically and she's been raising her daughter while still living in that small town the hero now comes back to live at home while well, he had been away for a long time he had gotten married had a child so now he's back after his wife passes away and he's back with his teenage daughter now both of their kids really don't like each other there's a little bit of bullying going on and they are having to face the feelings that they had for each other all those years ago and how things went in very different directions than what they were expecting so it was a really sweet story i love stories where there's to both of the main characters are single parents and I think that adds a nice dynamic because also you have the relationship between the kids to take into consideration and I think that Corey Michaels did a great job at including that in the story and weaving it in a way that made sense it added another layer to the story we obviously do get to see more from the heroine's daughter than the heroes I would have liked to see a little bit more of a balance on that but I really liked their interactions and of course I'm always a sucker for like a second chance romance and in this case it's more like a second chance ad love so they were never together but they finally got their chance to be together so those are always really sweet and i think that that's what this story really delivered was just a really sweet story the next book that i read was in five years by rebecca surley i gave this four stars this is a women's fiction novel i picked this up kind of on a whim i saw it on instagram i saw a lot of people talking about it on instagram when it came out and i just picked up the audiobook and it was a super fast read it's really short but it was very interesting at the same time. It's kind of a different concept. So our heroine has her life completely mapped out. She knows what she wants, when exactly she wants everything to happen, how her life is gonna look like. And one day there's this thing that happens to her where she wakes up and she, I guess, kind of finds herself forward in time five years and the life that she's seeing and the person that's with her is not what she was expecting and when she wakes up again she's back in her timeline five years before and she spends all this time trying to make sure that what she saw doesn't happen it is a very character driven story it does get emotional at some point throughout the story as well so overall i think it was a really great read it's not really a romance so definitely keep that in mind it's not one of those women's fiction that has a side romance and a happily ever after in the end so keep that in mind going into it but i really enjoyed it i really liked what we got in this story and overall how interesting and a little bit different that it was the next book that i read was another book that i picked up on a whim after seeing it on instagram and it's without you by marley valentine this is a male male romance i ended up rating this three stars 
Price. This was my first time reading this author and it was kind of a sweet read but it definitely didn't pack a punch that I was expecting. So I didn't think it was as emotional or as sexy or I was as invested. So it was just an okay read for me. It does deal with a sibling's ex kind of trope, but these two actually get together not because there was a breakup, but because the sibling actually died. It also deals with the gay for you trope, which can be done well, but maybe sometimes I don't buy into as much. So I think this was one of those cases where it didn't make sense for me as much how it was handled. But like I said, not too steamy, kind of a cute laid back book. Although I don't know that it's left me wanting to read a ton of books by Marley Valentine in the future. So the next book that I read was Fury Unleashed by N.J. Walters. It's book one in the Forgotten Brotherhood series. It's a paranormal romance series and it does deal with angels and demons. I gave this three stars. I haven't read N.J. Walters before but I do know a few people that have read her in the past and have enjoyed her books and she has been on my TBR or have been wanting to read her for a really long time. This is a new series by her. Now I was not expecting this to be so steamy. I feel like it's definitely more on the erotic paranormal side um, but at the same time it felt like it had too much sex if that makes sense. But if you're looking for a steamy read definitely this would be the one for you. Not to say it wasn't done well, but I wanted a little bit more of the world building, especially because I was really interested in the world building. I was really interested in the characters and the whole battle of heaven and hell and Gabriel and Lucifer and all of that going on. So I was really interested in the world itself and I feel like I kept wanting more and I didn't get it. So I'm still interested to continue the series and to see what else there is to see of this world. So I will probably continue and read book two, but definitely this would be a great one if you are looking for a more steamy paranormal romance. The next book that I read was The Sinner by J.R. Ward. This is book 18 in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. It's a paranormal romance series. <sighs> I gave this 3.5 stars. I'm kind of conflicted about this one because I wanted more from this than it actually delivered. Some of it felt a little boring and tedious and kind of day-to-day -day stuff. Some of it was funny, so I did like being along for that day-to-day -day stuff when it was funny, but not everything was funny. However, I still think that it's a better book than the last few books in this series that I have read, so I like that about it. I like the relationship between Butch and V that we do get to see more of that in this book so that was probably my favorite part of the story. I wanted to see more for the Joe Early and the relationship between her and Butch and Manny and all of that so I really wanted that explored more. We didn't see a lot of that and then there's the main romance obviously Sin and Joe Early. I don't know that it gave me everything that I wanted. It was kind of bland. Um, they do have chemistry and they are sweet together, but I don't know that Sin was as badass as I wanted him to be. I've seen a little bit of him in previous books in this series and I was really expecting him to be kind of a tough guy, bad guy kind of thing. And that's not what we got from him, so I was a little disappointed for that. But I think my biggest letdown was the big thing that this book was supposed to be resolving, which is the Destroyer Prophecy. And I, for me, it was really disappointing to see how it all unfolded um, and how everything was cleared up in the end. Definitely not what I was expecting, not what I wanted, and a bit anticlimactic, I guess, for me. So that was probably one of the big things why I rated this as low as I did. And I say low, even though 3.5 stars is still a good rating for me, but it's definitely much lower than what I'm used to giving to J Award in this series. The next book that I read was Something in the Air by L.H. Cosway. This is book two in the Running on Air series. It is a contemporary romance. I gave this four stars. I also read this for Romanceopoly for the winter challenge for the sun pack because I'm sort of making my way a little bit through the sun pack as well. Now, this is a workplace romance. The hero is the boss, the heroine is the assistant, um, the hero is a parkour athlete and him and his friends run 
a parkour reality TV show and the heroine is sort of the assistant for the show and the hero was engaged and he had bought a house without his fiance knowing that he plans on remodeling before the wedding so he had assigned the assistant to be the one in charge of the renovations to help him out and she had moved into the house because of issues that she had at home so it was a good arrangement between the two of them now this didn't exactly deliver what i was expecting in a way that was good and in a way i wanted a little bit more but it was still overall a really good read um, four stars obviously I still enjoyed it it is an age gap romance as well it is also a book that deals with some heavier subjects like grief and abuse and in a way I wanted those explored more because I feel like it was dealing with some pretty heavy things and I don't think that the book delved into them enough but this book definitely has that LH Causeway feel the characters are quirky and fun and they have great chemistry together they really have a great friendship as well because they've been working together for a while then they end up being roommates when he moves back into this house and she's still living there so it was a good dynamic I enjoyed them together I enjoyed to see the progression from boss and assistant friends and then more so I really like that it was kind of an understated book also and I am looking forward to the next book in this series. The next book that I read was Witness in Death by J.D. Robb. This is book 10 in the In Death series. Um, this is also obviously for In Death Read Along and I read it for the Romance Happily Challenge for Sleuth Street for the Sun Pack, which was to read a thriller that has the word death in the title. Now I gave this book four stars. I still liked it, but probably wasn't like one of my top favorites in the series. If I'm going to be honest, I actually really liked the parts in the story with McNabb and Peabody. So I still love Even Rourke, obviously, but they sort of are stealing the show for me now. I'm just really anxious and looking forward to seeing any of their interactions and what's going on with them. And also seeing Peabody come out of her shell a little bit more and stand up to Eve just a tiny bit more. I think in this one also the murder mystery aspect it was a little bit easier to figure out. I have been confused or fooled in the previous books or figure in figuring out who the killer was and in this one I think it was pretty obvious from the beginning or from sort of the beginning I was able to pinpoint and be right. Now it was still an enjoyable book it was still a fun read even though it's not my favorite in the series but I definitely still recommend it I still love even work and I still enjoy every single installment of this series that I get to read. The next book that I read was actually a reread for me and I don't do a lot of rereads but I'm going to be rereading the Night Huntress series and I reread Halfway to the Grave by Janine Frost this month. It's actually my third time reading this particular book. I still gave it five stars. It is an urban fantasy and I got to like fall in love with again Bones and Cat and one thing that does stand out is the fact that I forgot how young Cat was when this series started just because I'm so used to seeing her in her new self um, later on in the series and in the spin-offs and I completely forgot where she came from how she was at the very beginning how her relationship with Bones developed so I really enjoyed seeing all of that again they are such a great power couple this book has a great plot it has great romance it has great action I had actually forgotten if there was sex in this one or not and that was actually a question that my husband had asked me because I had recommended this book for him to read and I couldn't remember so at least now I can answer that in that yes there is sex and it was pretty steamy because I mean come on it's bones so if you haven't read the series what are you waiting for definitely read it you have to meet these characters they are amazing and I can't wait to reread more of the series the next book that I read was Lord Holt Takes a Bride by Vivienne Lorette this is book one in the Mating Habits of Scoundrels historical romance series I gave this four stars and one thing that stands out to me with Vivienne Lorette is the fact that she does write historical romantic comedies really well I think if you're a fan of Tessa Dare you definitely need to check out her books and 
I would definitely suggest starting with this one. It was such a fun book. The heroine is a curvy heroine. She is not as confident and her father has decided to marry her off to this guy who has a title but doesn't have a fortune so he wants to marry her basically for her money. She has had a lot to deal with with self-confidence. Her mother also makes her feel the same way. So there's a lot of that going on for our heroine. So I really felt for her. I immediately loved her and I loved her personality and her group of friends. And I really wanted to see her break out of that shell, which is obviously what she does. She's a runaway bride, so she doesn't get married. She decides to run away and she thought that the person that was this man that was in the carriage waiting outside of where she was supposed to be getting married was her friend's cousin because that's the plan that they had was that the cousin was going to help her escape but it turns out that it was somebody else and this guy is looking for a revenge because her friends had kidnapped him and b he needs money from probably returning her back to her father. But together they end up going on this great adventure. It was so much fun. They get on all kinds of trouble. And as the time that they spend together progresses, the heroine really opens up and her personality flourishes. And the two of them together were just so perfect. It was so much fun. This book will have you laughing out loud at a lot of the things that happen. It will definitely put you in a good mood. I think it's sort of like the book that got me out of my reading slot in the month of March. So I'm super excited for the rest of the series because I, like I said I loved the cast of characters and the heroine's friends so I'm super excited to see what's next in this series. The next book that I read was From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout and this is book one in the Blood and Ash series. It's a YA or NA fantasy novel and I ended up giving this four stars. I really enjoyed it. It does have a forbidden romance. It has the chosen one trope. I also read this for romance happily for journey's end which is to read a fantasy with a chosen one trope for the moon pack. Now I will say that this is more of a character driven story and we don't get to see a fast development on the plot and the world building and the politics and everything that's going on. So it is a slow development on the story, but it is character driven. So you are getting to see a lot of the heroine and her interactions with the hero, with her friends, with everybody. So I think that if you like those type of stories that are character driven, you'll enjoy it. So for me, it was okay. It didn't bother me that we weren't seeing as much of the world, although I was anxious to see what was going on. Now you do get that reveal towards like the last 25% of the book and once that starts happening and you, everything starts coming together I really loved it even more so it's left me really anxious and excited for the next book in this series. It ends in a tiny bit of a cliffhanger not one of those where it leaves you like itching to get the next book because like it's bad place to stop it but I am anxious to see where the story is going to go and I don't think it's too spoilery to say that it does have to deal with vampires. I think that Jennifer Armentrout did the vampire twist really well. I'm super excited to see how that develops further continuing on in the series. Definitely excited for that and the romance which is the biggest portion of the plot of this book. It was really, really good. I think that these two had excellent chemistry together. It, there was plenty of sexual tension, banter, chemistry. So it definitely kept me turning the pages and wanting to know more about what would happen between them. And last but certainly not least was The Moon Glow Sisters by Lori Wilde. I gave this book three stars. It's a women's fiction novel and I think it's Lori Wilde's first attempt at uh, women's fiction and it's one of those again that has a pretty strong romance subplot so it would be good for romance readers wanting to get into women's fiction. It's about three sisters and one of them was engaged to be married and the other one ended up kissing her fiance and it was all because she knew that this guy that her sister was going to get married to was not a good guy and she wanted to prove that to her sister but things didn't quite work out the way that she thought they would. Her sister was not quite so thankful 
for having shown her what kind of guy her fiance was and obviously they didn't get married and from that point on the three sisters ended up going three completely different paths only one of them stayed back home and now their grandmother who's the one that raised them has cancer and she's having to go through a surgery so they're all called back into the small town to be with their grandmother during this time and they finally have to come face to face with the things that happen and sort of get over that so that they can be there for their grandmother and do the things that she wanted them to do. I actually think this is a cute book to read like at the beach is very like laid back and very beachy with the setting. One of the heroine actually designs kites and she flies them um, at the beach because she has like a boardwalk shop. So it was kind of a cute story for that reason. I think I wanted a little bit more drama and a little bit more emotion from the story than what we got. And then it does have a romance like I said, but I also wanted to see that developed a little bit more because I think it relies heavily on the fact that the couple uh, they've known each other for since they were kids and they were best friends growing up so it relies heavily on the fact that you know that that connection is already there which it can work well for me sometimes it works well really well for me when it's a novella but when we're talking about a full-length book I want to see a little bit more of that developed so it, it, that's probably one of the things that to me could have been done better. And that's all the 16 books that I read in the month of March. Let me know in the comments down below what was your favorite book that you read in March. I would love to check it out. As always, don't forget to find us on the blog at underthecoversbookblog.com and all our other social media channels. Everything will be linked in the information box down below, as well as all the books that I talked about in this video. Like this video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our videos. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you again in the next one. Bye.